guys Nate's making me do another press conference I thought we covered it all Saturday I was thought we were good this is the last one? Oh, kind of sad. Uh, okay, what do you guys got? So, so Justin was talking about the team not panicking early. You, you come back and do a lot of things. The fact that you have so many international players, and they've probably played up, I guess, against older people, does that come from you know having to play against older guys, not panicking, just working through things? Um, I mean, maybe. I mean, may maybe some of that, you know. Um, you know, I just think it's just, you know, it's, we, we talk about it all the time. These games are long. And, you know, you, you know, how many times have you guys seen a team get out to a fast start and then it's tied up by halftime, you know? And so it just happens all the time. You just got to hang in there and kind of go possession by possession. And, um, you know, and, and I think we got a gritty group, you know, and, and maybe some of that has to do with playing with older players. But, um, you know, the only two, the only, I only can think of like two guys that would have had any of those experiences at all would have been Kerr and, and probably Zoo, you know, but Umar and, uh, and, you know, and, and Umar didn't have that, and, 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 like, you know, Adama doesn't play much. You know, Adama played against the men, but with kids on his team, you know. So, I, I don't know. I, I, I Probably not too much of it, and um, it's, just a, it's just a good deal about guys just kind of hanging in there and, and, and going possession by possession. What do you, uh, do you have any thoughts on the playing with, uh, in altitude, if there's anything that you have to do differently for those games? Don't acknowledge it. Nope. Expect they substitute differently, maybe subtly at least, or see how the game goes. You know, I mean, I mean, we obviously we're pretty, we've got pretty much into a substitution pattern, and um, you know, I mean, I've played at altitude a lot of times. You know, I think every guy that's ever started the game has finished the game. We haven't anybody go to the hospital. Nobody died, so just it's the same deal. Just go go play the game. Like say when you guys were when the Zags were at BYU. Yeah, do you remember? I remember we played a lot of good teams down there, and, and you know, I mean, I'm, a lot of times you go down there, you started out slow, and then by halftime you were tied, and you just got to take the same approach. I mean, you know, we, we won't even acknowledge it. Can you give me a scouting report on Utah offensively and defensively? Yeah, I mean, Utah, you know, they're, uh, you know, obviously they haven't had the probably the greatest season overall, but, you know, they won two road games, and, you know, offensively, you know, uh, you know that they, they 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 like they obviously share the ball. They move the ball. They get you in different ball screen spacing scenarios. Um, you know, we didn't play against Carlson last time, the big guy, and and he's he's tall and he's talented. I mean, he makes threes. He can he finishes above the rim. Um, he's a good rim protector. So you know, I, I think that's going to obviously be a, a little bit of a, a difference maker for them. And then you know that their gu their guards you know are solid and they make solid decisions and they share the ball and, and Gok is a shot maker, you know. So they, they do they do a, a good job of kind of moving the pieces around and, and forcing you to make decisions where you're going to help off of, you know. De defensively, you know they're 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 solid. They're solid on that end. You know they they it's like they have a solid game plan. And uh, you know I think you look at a lot of the teams that come from the where their coach comes from the Dakotas. That's kind of a familiar theme. You know, they're just rock solid. It's, it's, it's for the most part, it's man-to-man -man defense, and you know they'll they'll give you some different looks on ball screen coverages where they'll be aggressive and hedge, and you know, and 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 maybe stay with the ball a little bit longer than most teams, and um, and you know they do a good job of you know picking who the help defender is in the paint, and they're very disciplined in that. Justin talked about the consistency of this team not staying too high, too low. Uh, what do you have to say about that, just how they've been able to stay consistent throughout the game? Well, it's great, you know. I mean, it's something you strive for, you know. And, um, you know, I mean, the, the more consistent you, you, you perform, the, the more consistent results you're going to get. And, and so, you know, we, we, we talk about it at both ends of the floor, and it always starts with effort. Th then right after effort, you have decision making. And, uh, you know, what decisions are you making at both ends of the floor? And, and you know, that, that stuff we drill and we practice every day more than – we, we drill our decision making way more than we do our sets, you know, and, and our coverages on defense. You know, we, we want to we want to become good decision makers with, who play with great effort. And, and, and that's and I think that's what gives you consistent results. Can you talk about Justin being the older guy? He seems like he's a calming voice. He's he's Justin's a special kid and man, you know, I should say. And, and we give him a hard time, you know, because he's you know been in college, you know, so much longer than all these other guys. And, and he takes it great. He's, he's just been a real joy to have around all year. And, and, and 
Um, I'm thankful to have coached him. I wished I, I could have had him for multiple years. Um, he just, he, 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 you know, this is the first time in his career he hasn't started. And, you know, even last game, you know, he probably didn't play as many minutes as he liked, and I didn't even realize he hadn't played so many minutes. And so, so I went up to him after the game, and I apologized. That's my fault. And, uh, and he was happy we won. You know, he's been happy all year. Um, you know, I, I see in the second half of these games when, you know, they're getting tight or we're getting ready to make a run. He's front and center, whether he's in the game or out of the game. And, uh, you know, that, that's, it's, been, it's been a great example for, for me and for everybody in the program. And, and, you know, whatever I can do to help him the rest of his life, I'm going to do. You know, I, I think he's going to have a, an opportunity to have a lengthy career, you know, after Arizona. Um, you know, whatever level he ends up playing, you know, whether it's in the U.S. or in Europe, and, and I want to make sure we're doing everything we can to help him, you know, as, as he pursues his opportunities after here. And, and just, um, you know, we're lucky to have him. It's kind of crazy how you end up with some of these guys sometimes, and especially when, when you get a late start in a recruiting cycle. Um, you know, I, I couldn't ask for a better guy. Can you tell he's the, the tourist of the group? He says that he's the guy who's always taking pictures whenever you guys go on. Um, yeah, but you know, but that, that's really cool. I mean, I, I haven't noticed that, but I've talked to him because I think he's one of those guys who has those special personalities that, you know, you know, you guys probably don't, but I do. You follow basketball over in Europe, and you'll be like, where did this guy come from? How did he end up having such a great, lengthy career over there? And and it usually starts with not only talented players, but worldly people and and people that enjoy you know, traveling, living in other countries, you know, because basically, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, he's what, 22, 23 years old. Um, he's, you know, for the next, you know, six to eight to 10 years of his life, he might not be in the U.S. much, you know, so you, so you better enjoy traveling. So, so he and I have had those conversations and, 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 and um, that's really cool to hear that, that he, he enjoys doing that stuff. Surprising in the sense that sometimes you get, you know, that fourth, fifth year transfer who started a lot, transfers up, but wants more, I mean, you know, with his pro career coming on and, you know, that he's – Well, I mean, listen, listen, the, 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 a lot of them want more. But, but you know, more comes can come in a lot of different areas. More doesn't mean – doesn't have to mean me. I mean, more can mean we, you know, and, and, and obviously this group's experiencing more in a lot of ways, other ways this year that aren't, you know, specifically tied to an individual. And, um, and, and I think, you know, it's, it's a great experience for young guys to go through. And, and, and I know this, Justin's in contributing. He's an important part of this team. He's enjoying every moment of it. He's enjoying his teammates' successes. And those traits are going to allow him to be successful in life beyond here. So is there anything you talk to about Pella playing his old team just to make sure he's focused and there's no distractions? No, not really. I mean, he, he, I mean, he told me a couple of days ago his neck was sore, and I'm like, oh, I didn't have you as being a guy that was faking an injury before he played Utah, and he, just, he, he gave me a dirty look. <laughs> I'm sure good. He's a great guy. I mean, I mean, Pella's a great human being, and I mean, I'm, I'm assuming the fans, you know, in Utah are respectful and understand, you know, I mean, a lot of things happened, you know, you know, that that weren't part of Pella's doing that ended up ultimately ended up him making a decision he was going to transfer. So, you know, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll be great, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure he'll play fine. Seems like his role is getting bigger defensively. Like, were you are you more? It seems, would you say more and more comfortable uh, switching him in, even on a, a, a four man, you know, or a situation where team switching a lot? And, and have you stood next to Pella? He's he's as big as most people's four men. So like I got no problems putting him on anybody. I have no, I have no problem. I mean we were working on a plan this year when we played Illinois. I don't I don't think we got to it in the game, but we're certain segments of the game where he was going to guard Kofi. So no, he he's a very versatile defender. He's big. He's tough. He's physical. He takes pride in it. He plays with great effort. I mean, he checks all the boxes. Are you planning on coming back between Colorado and USC or going straight? Yes, there? coming yeah. back. Sunday for basketball times along those lines. Just that third game and kind of having to make up games. You've already done it to this point. Uh, is it difficult? Is it just another thing you got to go through? Normal. Well, I mean, it ends up being a lot. You know, like normally, you know, you 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 know, listen. I've been on the West Coast my entire coaching career, and and both leagues I've played in traditionally have been Thursday Saturday heavy. So you you get a rhythm. You know where you know like, you know obviously Sunday you're probably taking off. Monday you you can taking completely off. You can do a light day. You can do a really heavy day. You have options to kind of, 
depending on the time of year your your team's in what it does it takes away those options i mean so you're gonna you're gonna play saturday and sunday you're either gonna take it off or start walking through sc stuff and then monday you got to put in the game plan and and tuesday you got to play a 40 minute game so you just don't get the rest so it is it's it is more difficult and it, and it kind of they do end up piling up on you but that being said everybody for the most part is having to do it the unfortunate thing for us it has nothing to do with anybody is our three games that got canceled were all road games. So that means all three of our makeups, we got to go on the road, you know, and, and so that makes it a little bit tougher. It would have been a different story if, you know, probably a little easier if one or two of those games would have been a home game. And so our, our makeup games, you know, Monday, Tuesday at home just hasn't happened that way. Tom, how are you going to prepare the team or address the team with all the scrutiny that's going to start coming as we get closer to Pac-12 with the seedings and the rankings? A lot of members of your team haven't been through this before. You've obviously been through it with Gonzaga. How do you prepare them to block out all the noise and distractions? Well, the, the, the main thing's always the main thing, and that, that's basketball and, and winning basketball games because that's the reason the distraction's there. So, so, you, so you acknowledge that. And then I told them, you know, it, you, you know, to be a team that plays deep into a postseason, you've got to be able to handle – you know, a little bit of the extra attention or the chaos that's going on on the outside. But it's always going on on the outside. That's what you have to remind them. And when we get our time on the court, it's a special time for us to do our deal. And, um, you know, whether that's practice, film room, game, and we got to take advantage of it and enjoy it and understand that's the reason you're getting the extra attention. So, so you keep the main thing the main thing. And, and that's why I think, you know, even having college game day down here last week was a good deal. I mean, we weren't looking for the extra attention, but when it came, you don't, you don't, you don't push it aside because, you know, you kind of want to get used to operating. And, you know, maybe, maybe when you're under the, a little more scrutiny or under the microscope a little bit because th that, that's part of the process. I mean, I mean, I think it's, you guys probably obviously know where I stand. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, I don't think it's hard to shake somebody's hand after you lose the game. You know, I, I don't think it's hard to, you know, you know, have a, you know, practice just a little bit of common courtesy and, 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 and swallow maybe your anger or your pride, you know, a little bit. I don't think that's a big deal. And for me, the timeouts at the end of the game are, have never meant anything. Like, I, I honestly don't care what the other coach does. You know, I'm not going to engage in it with them. I'm not going to get involved in any shenanigans. I'm not going to take things personal. And, um, you know, and that, that's just how I'm always going to operate. And, you know, if they call a timeout at the end of the game when they're kicking their butt, good for them. They kicked our butt. I mean, I'll, I'll, I will never remember it the next game. You know what I mean? I, I mean, for me, it, 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 it's no extra motivation or anything. So that, that's how I've chose to always handle those situations. Was there as much buzz in the, within the coaching fraternity about that issue this week as there was in the media? I mean, it just seems like everyone's dissecting I mean, I mean, I mean, a little bit, you know, but nothing crazy. I mean, you know, I mean, it's hey, you know, coaches this time of year, they they they're going to talk two seconds about something else, and they want to talk two minutes about themselves, you know, and, and their own team and their own deal. So, I mean, maybe everybody brought it up, but um, but nothing crazy. I think you mentioned this too on the radio, like the whole reset deal. That was like a an issue. Um, you know, well, it, it, it's a it's a. Well, I mean, I mean, listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not either coach, so I don't know. But like, that's that's a fact. You you if you call a timeout in the backcourt, you get a new 10 second, you know, to bring the ball over. Which, you know, it's kind of a crazy thing to think about. Why should you be able to call a timeout and get an extra 10 seconds? I mean, whatever. It is it is what it is. So you take advantage of the rules how they're written, and you know, I mean, I, I got to make sure I remember that. You know, like, like under two minutes to go because the coach can call a timeout. And, 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 you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, you just want to make sure you remember that because it's, uh, it gives your team a little advantage. What are those conversations like at the end of the game? Is it a, hey, good job, good luck, or is it something more? Yeah, I mean, obviously it depends on, you know, your relationship with the other coach. But, yeah, I mean, mine are always along those lines, you know. You know, hey, Good job, good luck, you know, you got us tonight, whatever it is, you know, and that's it. You just keep them short and very cordial, and yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, it definitely is weird. Um, it's definitely not something I thought would happen, uh, but it also um, 
you know, I just cherish these moments because I've had three teams to do it with, um, and each group has been so special. Um, so this one will hit a lot different for sure. Has, has this decision to come here in your mind paid off? It's the best decision I've ever made in my life. Best decision I've ever made in my life. And uh, a lot of people will ask why. Um, but I love these guys. I love this coaching staff. Um, Coach Lloyd's done so much for me. And uh, um, I think our relationship is building every single day. Um, he's someone I genuinely can have a conversation with. I feel like um, just me and his uh, personality is just kind of, um, you know, just click, you know. So that's he's definitely uh, someone that I'm glad I've met and I'm glad I've been able to be coached by. Um, he's taught me so much this year um, on and off the court. Um, so I'm definitely grateful for him. And then, you know, this, this team um, with just the international guys is totally different. Um, small town kid, I never thought I'd meet this many international kids or play with them. Um, and it's actually, they've helped me a lot too. They've, you know, I've taken some things from them and I'm sure, you know, they've taken some things from me. Um, but it's just cool. This experience has been amazing. Um, it's definitely something that I, I, I'm 100% glad I did. Say okay, this is the best decision I've ever made. Um, I think about I think it's just the like more of me th like the memories, you know. That's that that's what makes me know like I made the best decision is just the memories I'm gonna look back at. Like I look at you know the summer from now, um, and then till 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 now it's just been amazing and uh, the way this group has clicked. Um, and, you know, we had transfers coming in, and I'm an older guy. Uh, it's, just, it's just been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's things that I'll definitely remember for the rest of my life. So I feel like with that, I'm just no question the best decision. Being that you are the older guy, have you had to have older guy moments to kind of settle the other guys, the younger guys? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, but if you know me, if you truly know me, I'm, I'm pretty joyful. So I kind of bring out the kid side and the younger guys, if you know what I mean. Um, I try to not seem as old with them. Um, try to, you know, laugh and have fun. Um, and then on the court, you know, you got you to gotta mix the two. So um, just locking in and stuff like that on the court, showing them, especially in games, just certain decisions and, and things. I try to, uh, you know, talk to the ear. Maybe not just say it to the whole group, but I'll, I'll, I'll chip into the ear. I'll talk to Curl I, DT. Shane, you know, just, just try to give them pointers so when I leave, maybe they remember them. You guys have had a groove over the last month. What are some keys that, that have allowed you guys to play this well? Um, guys are staying consistent, you know. We're in the gym. Guys are staying consistent. And, uh, you know, when we get rattled, we're, I think that's the best thing about this young team is, you know, when, when we're down 10 at the beginning of the first half or whatever, you know, we, we don't panic. And it's the biggest maturity thing you could have for your team is not to panic. If you panic, you can turn that 10 to 20. Um, and we've always been able to come back for it. Um, so I think the maturity level, um, and then that's also the coaching staff too. Credit to them, they, they really know how to, you know, keep us poised and let us know, even if we're panicking um, mentally, they let us know, hey, calm down, we'll be fine. Um, we're not playing our best. Uh, just pick it up a notch, pick it up on defense, you know, take great shots, don't, hes don't be hesitant. Stuff like that. They give us a lot of confidence to play, and um, I think that's why we're having so much success. Not only with Coach Lloyd, but the rest of the coaching staff, how have they impacted you here at Arizona? They're taking me on their wing. Um, you know, Coach Rob is a, is a Virginia guy like me, so we have a special bond as well. Um, Coach Murphy, we're getting really close, um, especially towards the end of this year. Um, you know, TJ Benson, Rim, um, Ricky, all, all, our, all our staff, um, I have a pretty good relationship with, and uh, something I haven't been able to do just because it's me is keep up with people um, when I move on. And that's one thing I, I want to do and I want to work at is, is staying in touch with these guys for sure because um, they mean a lot to me, and I, wanna, I want them to know that beyond uh, my time here. Can you reflect back on last Saturday, what was it like with all the hype in the morning all the way through the, the tough game that you had against Oregon? Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a great you know tough week for us and and um, the outside world doesn't really notice that um, but we have a you know obviously we have a target in in the Pac-12 and on our backs and uh, we knew Oregon was a great team and uh, we knew Oregon State was going to come in here um, hungry as well we knew they were going to come in here hungry 
um, get a chance to, you know, get us at our home court. So we had to just lock in like we always do. Um, don't switch up anything. Don't try anything new. Play together um, and play, you know, play good basketball, play Arizona men's basketball. Did you learn anything about the team? Because you've had come from behind wins, you've had blowout wins. That was a tight one where it came down to the final couple of seconds of a defensive stop. How does that help you get better going into the future? Yeah, um, I have trust in our guys, you know. I have trust in our guys, and if we would have lost that game, um, our season wasn't going to be over, you know. So um, we just got to stay, you know, locked in. And I've been on teams where it, it hasn't, you know, we're, we're fighting. We have to win um, these last couple games to make sure, you know, we get a good seed in the tournaments and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we want to, like, keep our composure and stuff like that. But um, I've been on teams like that. So I kind of have different perspectives on, on how we should go. And I've seen a lot of teams at this time crumble. You know, they think, oh, we've done very good. You know, we've been hooping all year long, um, and we're fine. You know, if we lose a couple games, it is what it is. That's not how it should be here. We're good enough to finish this thing out, and uh, we have high standards. So um, I know for the coaching staff, they're going to continue to be on us till the last, you know, until the last game. The, the travel in this league. Uh, I, looking back, it doesn't look like you ever played three straight on the mm -hmm. road, and now this will be three times that you've done that. Yeah. What, what's that like being away for uh, for that long and not coming home? It's definitely different. That's that's something I have never. Yeah, right. I've never done that. So um, it's it's fun. You, you you know you get to spend more time with your teammates and cherish those moments. Um, we get to eat good. You know, we get to go to different you know restaurants. I've. They always make fun of me because I have my phone out all the time taking pictures and, and uh, videos to send back home because I've never been on the West Coast. This is my first time being in California, first time being in Arizona here. Um, you know, it'll be my first time in Utah, Washington, Oregon, all that stuff. So um, these are just memories for me, man. It's just um, been amazing places, great scenery, and I like that stuff. I like taking pictures. I like seeing um, cool stuff. So it's just been amazing for me, honestly. Have you ever played in altitude? No. no. So is there anything that the coaches said uh, in the preparation for this trip about, you know, better preparing yourself for playing? I'm sure it's coming. Yeah, I'm sure it's coming. Uh, we just have honestly been focused on the game plan. We're not worried about that. We're going to go out there and play our hardest regardless. Um, but no, we have not spoke on that yet. I'm sure we will. What's your favorite, speaking of the, the place you're taking pictures of, what's your favorite either site or city or, or area you think? We were on, uh, I think it was actually in Seattle. Um, there was like this Ferris wheel. They had this boardwalk or whatever, and it looked out, and it had like this big old lake with uh, a bunch of trees and mountains, and uh, I have a few videos and pictures of that. It was, it was pretty cool. Have you been for that third game, you know, that Thursday, Saturday, and that Tuesday game, one of those? How, how is it preparing for that Tuesday game? And you guys are young. I mm -hmm. guess you probably can do that easily. But is it difficult? Is it... Uh, Whatever the words are? Um, I think we've done it before, honestly, you know. I think we've done it before. It's not something we're, we're going to, you know, look at and be like, hey, it'll be okay if we don't. No, we're going to go in there and, and uh, expect to win. Regardless of anything, we're going to go in there and expect to win, execute the game plan. Uh, you know, we've had we've had tough road games, you know, and, you know, it, it'll just be a bounce back game. We're going to have to get through it. I'll go over that hump that we've, you know, we've gone a lot of, a lot of humps this year. So um, I think we'll be fine. The other guys, I noticed you're always at the end of the hands, or, or not the handshake line, but the you know the introduction line, you know, slapping guys, etc. Where did that come from? Did you want to do that? Coaches wanted you to do that, or you know? And Honestly, I just kind of fell into it because I don't. I, no one really, you know, jumped in to be that man, and I feel like I have the personality to do that um, with all the guys. All the all my relationships with the starting five is is a lot different, so it kind of shows that in the handshakes and. Uh, in the um, fun we have at the beginning of the game. So um, I'm actually really glad I got to do that because, you know, that's just something I'll remember again. That's another memory that I'll, I'll put in my book. What's been noticeable about the way Ben has played over the last month? Ben works hard. Ben works hard. And one thing I've noticed over, you know, this year is Ben's a competitor. And, and I've seen him have more joy playing this game this year um, than, you know, I've seen him have, you know, I've, I've seen him smile. I've seen him um, make a basket and actually show emotion. And uh, if you know Ben, that's, that's, that's a great sight to see. Um, and I know he's having fun, man. He's, he's, he's having fun. He loves this group a lot. Um, 
and he's just trying to win. He wants to. He wants what everybody else wants. So. After last game, that he always has to remind him to smile, be positive. But does he take himself seriously? Yeah, he wants to be the best. He wants to be the best at, at everything. It doesn't matter what we're doing. Um, any contest, he wants to be the best. Um, and I think that's why he's going to be a great NBA player. I think he's going to strive to be the best he can be is because he's so competitive in everything. Um, and I think he's actually learning that you can be competitive and have fun as well. So. Is that indicative of the rest of the team? Say it again. Is that indicative of the rest of the individual players from Kerr, from CeeLo to Umar? Are they all that competitive? Yeah, I think everybody's competitive. They're just competitive in their own way. You know, some some guys are you can see it, and then you know some guys you won't see it until something happens, and then you'll you'll figure it out. So um, everybody's different. Everybody's personality is different. So um, you kind of see that competitiveness in in different ways throughout the guys. But everybody on our team's competitive, and everybody wants to win. Thank you guys.